Hello students, this is the second lecture of our spring semester course. In this lecture, we shall discuss about why and how the renewable energy is important. And before we begin to learn about the materials for renewable energy, we shall see the grave importance and need of the art to give serious thoughts and efforts towards constructing robust and sustainable system to harvest energy from renewable resources. The topics we shall discuss in this lecture are burning of fossil fuels and pollution, hidden cost of fossil fuels, global heating and its consequences, extinction of species and disappearance of islands, renewable energy methods, current status of renewable energy, and future directions. In this part of the lecture, we shall discuss about burning of fossil fuels and pollution. First, we shall discuss about burning of fossil fuels, which has enormously increased the pollution on this earth. Fossil fuel is a general term used for the combustible materials obtained from buried geologic deposits of organic materials, which are formed from decayed plants and animals over hundreds of millions of years under the influence of heat and pressure in this earth's crust. The main fossil fuels are crude oil, coal, natural gas, or heavy oils. After formation of earth and advent of living creatures until finally the wise human beings appeared, the atmosphere did not see any significant change in the carbon dioxide profile. It remained practically undisturbed for more than last 400,000 years until during the last 150 years, human civilization entered into industrial revolution. The latter contributed a dramatic rise in the carbon dioxide levels. Here in the graphical representation are shown the main contributors for carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. These are gas flaring and cement production. The two are represented with teal color and gray color lines in the graph. And the bigger contributors are natural gas, coal and petroleum. The, all these sources put together, the burning of fossil fuels have been continuously adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere since 17th century. This graph shows records up to 2007. Of these fossil fuels, the burning of coal, petroleum, and natural gas constitute the major part. Within the last 50 to 70 years, that is after the Second World War, every nation started focusing on rebuilding their economies, which are heavily dependent on energy consumption, and the demand was adequately met by burning of the fossil fuels. The developed nations like European Union, USA and Russia could able to reduce the emission by materializing the renewable resources, whereas the newly rising nations were lagging far behind. Pollution to the air can be created by both ways, natural as well as man-made. The examples of natural air pollution sources are volcanic eruptions and ground level ozone. The volcanic eruptions releases methane, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, sulfur and nitrogen oxides or SOx and NOx gases to the atmosphere. The man-made sources for carbon dioxide to the atmosphere largely comes from burning of the fossil fuels. Here in this map, the carbon dioxide emissions per capita for the year 2017 has been displayed. The average carbon dioxide emissions per capita measured in tons per year has been shown maximum in the North American countries like USA and Canada. The Middle East countries like Saudi Arabia, Oman, Iran, in the Asian countries like Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Mongolia, China, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, in the South Africa and the continental Australia, New Zealand, and Russia and other European Union nations. The man-made sources, however, release even greater amounts of pollutants to the air. The list includes greenhouse effect, particulate contamination, increased ultraviolet radiations, acid rain, increased ground level ozone concentration, and increased levels of nitrogen oxides. We shall see these topics one by one. The greenhouse effect is a natural phenomenon, but when aggravated by pollution, 
it no longer remains a natural phenomenon. The light energy during the daytime shown here in the white arrows emitted by sun is absorbed by the earth's surface. A part of this radiation is reflected by the earth's surface and it warms the atmosphere. The reflected radiations are shown by the orange arrows. Much of these reflected heat radiations are absorbed by the water vapor molecules, carbon dioxide and methane gases which are also known as greenhouse gases. Here is another picture with a simplified representation showing the flow of energy between space, the atmosphere and the earth's surface and how the flows collectively trap the energy near the earth's surface to create the greenhouse effect. The sun is the only source of energy that reaches the earth's surface. An amount of 1366 watts per square meters of energy reaches to the top surface of the earth's atmosphere from the sun. But due to geometric effects and relative surfaces, limits this from reaching to the earth's ground surface, which is 235 watts per square meter. More than 99% of the dry atmosphere is transparent to the infrared radiations. The main gases present in the atmosphere such as nitrogen, oxygen and argon cannot absorb or emit heat radiations. On the other hand, most of the dye, tri and multi-atomic gases with heteroatoms efficiently absorb the heat radiations. A portion of this incident radiations goes directly to the atmosphere and the rest reaches to the ground or the land and the oceans which becomes warmer by approximately 14 degrees Celsius. The land also receives heat energy from the atmosphere. The land and the oceans then releases the absorbed heat energy to the atmosphere which is then trapped by the greenhouse gases present in the atmosphere keeping the latter warm. As of percentage Water vapors present in the atmosphere contribute 36 to 70 percent of the greenhouse effect. This is the reason why the coastal areas are warmer than the of course reasons. Next, carbon dioxide contribute 9 to 20 percent to the greenhouse effect. Methane and ozone contribute 4 to 9 and 3 to 7 percent respectively. Now the increased level of carbon dioxide, SOx and NOx have contributed massively to make the atmosphere much warmer than ever before, leading to the global warming and global heating sometimes. Particulate contamination is caused by particulate matters, also called as atmospheric aerosol particles atmospheric particulate matter or particulate matter or PM or suspended particulate matter or SPM. Here is a schematic representation of types and size distribution of atmospheric particulate matter in the micrometer scale length. The particulate matters are microscopic particles of solid or liquid matter suspended in the air. These are introduced to the atmosphere by both kinds of sources natural as well as man-made or by anthropogenic activities. Typical particulate matters include gas molecules created from pollutants and contaminants, soot, smoke, smog, fly ash, cement dust, biological microbes, mold spores and pollens. Here is another picture showing shades of gray and pink in the air above a metro city in India. Such cloud colors are frequently seen in many cities across the globe and often confused to be colorful clouds. Aerosols are closely related to the particulates. It is a combined form of solid particles and liquid droplets in the air, that is aero plus solution. Like greenhouse effect, the particulates or aerosols come from both kinds of sources, that is natural as well as the man-made or anthropological activities. Here are shown some examples of natural sources of aerosols. These are, but not limited to, volcano, dust storms, forest fires, 
geysers, grassland fires, ocean sprays, living vegetation, waterfalls, and so on. Here is the list of aerosol sources aggravated by human activities. These are stubble burning, road dust, power plants, insecticide and pesticide sprays, industrial cooling towers, exhaust gases from the automobiles and the vehicles, burning of coal, medical disinfection and so on. The aerosols created by human activities currently account for about 10% of the total mass of aerosols in the atmosphere. Mist, fog and the clouds are technically aerosols. These are formed by natural phenomena and cause precipitation and the rains. It is difficult sometimes to differentiate between the harmful and the harmless aerosol. Smog is the dangerous form of aerosol which is formed by combination of fog and smoke. Here in the picture, aerosol pollution over the northern India and Bangladesh is shown. Heavily to overpopulated cities or the regions situated near the coastal lines are often seen with frequent covers of aerosol pollution. Ozone is a trace gas of the atmosphere, forming a layer called ozone layer, with its level maximum at a height of 25 kilometers in the stratosphere. It is beneficial as it absorbs the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun and prevents it from damaging the life on this earth. Depletion of ozone layer is another serious consequence of air pollution. However, the causal ingredients do not come from the conventional fossil fuel burning. The main ozone depleting substances are halon or haloalkanes or halogenoalkane. These are a group of chemical compounds consisting of alkanes with halogen atoms like chlorine, fluorine or bromine attached to it. Other substances are chlorofluorocarbons or carbon tetrachloride or 111 trichloroethane hydrochlorofluorocarbons, methyl bromide, etc. Chlorofluorocarbons were developed during 1930s as safe, non-toxic, non-inflammable alternatives to the dangerous gases like ammonia for the purpose and utilization in refrigeration, spray can propellants, air conditioning, propellants in medical aerosols, blowing agents for foams as solvents, decreasing agents, cleaning agents, and so on. It received wide acceptance and growth in uses over the years. One of the elements, chlorine, in the chlorofluorocarbons is also present in the atmosphere among the other gases, but in very less amount. The uses of chlorofluorocarbons made its way to reach to the ozone layer where it is broken down by the ultraviolet rays to free the chlorine atoms. This single atom has large potential to destroy huge amounts of ozone and cause depletion. The ozone layer was found severely damaged over the Antarctica, increasing the number of gene damages and skin cancer cases. The chlorofluorocarbons or the CFCs have a lifetime in the atmosphere of about 20 to 100 years. So, this 21st century has to see its effects even after its production and usage is banned and terminated to the maximum extent. The effects of the increased ultraviolet radiation influx down to the surface of the earth is observed in many ways, such as altered precipitation, reduced ice and snow cover because of the detrimental effects of prolonged exposure of incident UV radiations, increased decomposition of the forest and the green covers which causes runoff of the important nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus from the hill soils, acidification of the soil and water bodies and 
photo decomposition of the litter. The ultraviolet radiations help in inactivation or killing of the pathogens, but this also kills the friendly soil bacteria and the earthworms. Killing of the pathogens is sometimes manipulated as beneficial to the standing crops and the yields, but the other side of the story is not that bright. In the oceans, the colored dissolved organic matter is hugely bleached by the prolonged exposure of the ultraviolet radiations which lead to the increased decomposition. Oceans are the largest sink to the carbon dioxide which absorbs huge amounts of carbon dioxide and saving the earth from overheating. Decomposition of these organic matters apparently reduces the vegetation or corals which fixes the carbon dioxide and this leads to sedimentation of the nutrients and in turn significant reduction of upwelling of nutrients and destruction of marine life that is fishes, aquatic animals and plants in the top layers of the ocean waters. A computational model predicts that a 10% decrease in the stratospheric ozone can cause an additional hike of 300,000 cases of non-melanoma, 4,500 cases of melanoma skin cancers and an alarming numbers of 1.6 to 1.75 million cases of cataract. In 1978, the Montreal Protocol was adopted as a framework for international cooperation regarding chlorofluorocarbon control as per direction of the Vienna Convention for the protection of the ozone layer. This matter was taken in huge consideration and by the year 1994, most of the countries agreed to cease its production. However, most of the countries still continue to produce it for its requirement in the aircraft fitted with Helon fire suppression system. The reason is that there is no other completely satisfactory alternative available to replace this application. There are few more additions to the list. And these programs are facilitated with recycle mechanisms to recover the halon released. These are known as halon banks, largely coordinated by Halon Recycling Corporation, which ensures that the discharge of halons to the atmosphere could be restricted completely or restricted usage only at uh, genuine emergencies. The total reported production of ozone depleting substances were brought down to virtual zero during the period 1990 and 2007. Definitely, alternative to halons had to be invented for a replacement and the quest began in late 1970s after the first warnings of the damages because of chlorofluorocarbons were published. One of the potential compound is HFC134A, which is 1112 tetrafluoroethane, another hydrofluorocarbon with insignificant ozone damaging properties and significantly lower global warming potential, that is, approximately 10 times lower, is now used in the place of chlorofluorocarbons in the automobile air conditioners. Another promising alternative is a blend of propane and isobutane that is extensively used in mobile or vehicle air conditioning systems in many countries including USA and Australia. A blend of ammonia and carbon dioxide which are natural refrigerants and have negligible environmental impacts are extensively used in domestic and commercial refrigeration applications. Also, these are finding its application in new split system air conditioners. A list of previously used chlorofluorocarbons and the alternatives for the replacements of refrigeration and air conditioning, propellants in medical aerosols, blowing agents for foams, and solvents de decreasing agents and cleaning agents have been shown here. Ozone in the stratosphere is beneficial as it saves the life on the earth. 
but the same ozone at the ground level has a different origin and is very harmful to the human health. Even if we escape from damaging the stratospheric ozone layer by restricting the uses of chlorofluorocarbons, the generation of ground level ozone is inevitable. The ground level ozone is created when emissions, oxides of nitrogen NOx, and volatile organic compounds mix in the presence of sunlight in a stagnant air. The NOx or nitrogen oxides are created from automobile exhaust and combustion of fossil fuels. 95% of the NOx gases come from human activities. The volatile organic compounds originate from natural resources that is vegetation and also from anthropogenic activities. The ground level ozone is created during daylight hours in the air which is in contact with the earth's surface that is troposphere by the reaction between oxides of nitrogen or NOx and volatile organic compounds or VOCs. The volatile organic compounds include methane, formaldehyde, naturally occurring scents and odors, wide range of solvents which is utilized in painting, surface cleaning, vehicle coating, dry cleaning, manufacturing of pharmaceutical products and footwear. Some more classes of VOCs come from burning of fossil fuels originating from automobiles, industries, storage and transportation. Plants and microbes also generate VOCs such as methane, isoprene, terpene and myrcene. The ground level ozone has serious impact on human health as it causes premature mortality, asthma and morbidity health. It has negative impact on the vegetation and decrease the productivity of some crops. It injures flowers and shrubs. It is the causal for decline of forest and green covers in many areas. It also causes damage of synthetic materials, cracks in rubbers and fading of dyes deterioration of paints and coatings on the building surfaces. It also causes damages of the cotton, acetate, nylon, polyester and other synthetic textiles. A serious consequence of increased levels of SOx and NOx in the atmosphere is the acid rains. These gaseous molecules, the volatile organic compounds, sulfur dioxide, NOx and mercury vapors stack onto the surface of the tiny dust particles in the air responsible for the formation of water droplets in clouds, which finally precipitates as rain. The SOx and NOx molecules, when combined with water molecules, it forms acids and the rain becomes acidic. The ground vegetation, forests, and green cover along with the crops are the receiving ends which are severely affected. Vegetation on Earth's surface are crucial. Plants naturally absorb nitrates and release hydroxyl ions which balances the pH of the soil and acidity is controlled. If the biomass is removed or damaged by the acid rains, the acidity in the soil increases alarmingly and it is very harmful for the crops. A further addition of nitrogen-rich fertilizers to the soil expecting an enhancement in the yields now backfires. So the fertilizers cannot alone save the crops. Furthermore, leaching out of nitrates causes an additional increase in the acidity. A severe damage to the forest vegetation was revealed in the Black Triangle Zaizera Mountains, Czech Republic in Europe, as shown in the picture here. It's very common to see the colored clouds at the sunset hours in industrial zones. The acid clouds can grow on sulfur dioxide emissions from the industries or the refineries, and the rain afterwards is detrimental to the paintings and coatings of the buildings, giving it dull looks. Pictures, artifacts, and sculptures throughout the world are protected from these acid rains. Here is a picture set showing that Howard wraps the bronze and marble statues and the other outdoor arts during the winters to protect them from the harmful acid rain and snow in the winters. In 
August 1945, the nuclear strikes led by the U.S. forces on Japan's Hiroshima and Nagasaki cities, which claimed millions of lives and the remaining population suffered through illness and curse of radiations through generations. Since then, the dominant nations continued to test nuclear weapons between the years 1945 and 1998, underground, underwater, and high up in the atmosphere. The nuclear tests conducted in the atmosphere during 1950s, 60s, and 70s, including the burn-up of a plutonium-powered SNAP-9A satellite in 1964, have created immense radioactive debris that became attached to the particles up in the air, that is aerosols. In the troposphere, the thickness of the atmosphere from the ground to about 17 to 20 kilometers above, these particles are believed to have washed out within few weeks to a few months after generation. But a barrier-like structure at the top of the troposphere and next layer, that is the stratosphere, extending up to 50 kilometers is believed to hold these particles for even longer duration perhaps a year or more? Scientists have concluded that these particles did create huge danger to the life on the Earth, but now all are washed off. But to where? Certainly not outside this Earth. It must have gone to the lands and the oceans to create even more greater danger. A lot of radioactive particles are generated during mining of fossil fuels. Such particles are common at the mining sites of uranium and coal mines. The mining is done in several methods. Some of the very common methods are mountain top removal and strip mining. Here are some examples of mining. First one is the Rosing Open Pit Uranium Mine in Namibia. The second one is mountain top removal site for coal. And the third one is coal mine in Bihar, India. Below is the picture is strip mining at Galsvillar, Germany. The lignite being extracted is at the left, the removal overburden being placed at the right. It is largely flat mine for a horizontal mineral deposits. All these methods generate huge amounts of dust and blown by the air to distant regions exposing radioactivity. The miners are directly exposed to the radioactivity. However, it is said that it is very small and insignificant, but the adverse effect on the health cannot be denied. Fossil fuels contain radioactive materials, mainly uranium and thorium. Burning of coal and petroleum release radioactive materials to the atmosphere. In the year 2000, approximately 12,000 tons of thorium and 5,000 tons of uranium were recorded to be released from burning of coal worldwide. In another incident during 1982, U.S. coal burning was estimated to have released 155 times as much radioactivity into the atmosphere as the Green Mile Island accident. The latter was a partial meltdown of a reactor of Three Mile Nuclear Power Generation Station TMI-2 in Dauphin Country, Pennsylvania in 1979. It was the most significant accident in the history of U.S. commercial nuclear power plants, which in total released approximately 2.5 mega curies of radioactive gases and 15 curies of radioactive iodine-131 into the environment. The casualties and the cancer causes after this incident remained hazy and never examined properly. It is estimated that the energy consumption will grow by 53% from 2008 to 2035. The pollution levels before corona lockdown were as severe so that many of the school children, the number in, is estimated in millions, were forced to stay at home and sale of masks and air filters rose up hugely. Between the years 1946 and 1958, the USA detonated 67 nuclear bombs on, in and above the grounds of Marshall Islands, a small island nation in the Pacific, vaporizing many of the entire islands and creating craters into its shallow lagoons. This also created forced migration of the native population to leave their homes only to become refugees. The Marshall Islands were considered to be and selected as ground zero for nuclear testings. 
the colonial narratives portrayed the island as a small, remote, and unimportant during the post-World War II and Cold War times. In the later years, a huge dome was created to bury more than 3.1 million cubic feet or size of 35 Olympic swimming pools of produced radioactive soil and debris which primarily contained little amounts of plutonium. It is feared that the dome has caused cracks and damage in its concrete structures at many places on its surface and being constantly washed by the tides of the rising sea. Marshall Island suffers from extensive coral bleaching, fish deaths, and algal blooms. Here is a picture of mushroom cloud from the largest atmospheric nuclear test the United States ever conducted at Castle Bravo, Marshall Islands. 66 similar tests were conducted in the same region, which released little amounts of radioactive materials that could be easily imagined. Another picture here shows the aerosol dispersion of Fukushima radioactive materials, which clearly indicates the quantum of a spread, exposure, and consequence of radioactive materials over the life on this earth. This slide needs no introduction or explanation. In the previous slides, we discussed elaborately the big picture of almost every aspect of the air pollution, the consequences and the adverse effects of air pollution by burning of fossil fuels for energy to run our industries and homes is one of the most popular and frequently discussed topics in the current time. Here is shown the different kinds of health hazards caused by the different aspects of air pollution and sometimes it is lethal. Now we shall continue to the part two of this lecture and we shall see some more aspects under the topic hidden costs of fossil fuels.